and different books. Uh, quite a lot, as you can imagine. Now, the other thing that Cambridge has, which most people don't know, is they have something called the Cambridge Learning Corpus. And what that is, that's a database of just under 60 million words in the English language, and they've collected those words. Anybody who does an exam at Cambridge University, the exam gets scanned and added into the database. But it's not just people who do exams at the university. Cambridge University also do exams around the world for 15-year-olds, 16-year-olds, and 18-year-olds. All of those are scanned in as well. Uh, well. More than scanned in, they're, they're input, and so they get the context of the word, how it's used, how the word changes over time. And there's, they've got languages from... In the use of English from over 148 different lang native languages from 217 countries. It is the largest database of the English language in the world. So they've got this database. Um, kind of been nice if someone could use it. And that's where I came in. Um, what they wanted to do, this guy Johnny Appleseed is the leader of the project, what they wanted to do was to give people access, give researchers access to this data, give teachers access to this data, so that they can teach English better. And it's specifically targeted at every one of you in the room who, where English is not your first language, so that a teacher could prepare lessons or write books at the correct level for you. And um, this is what the website looks like right now. It's ugly, okay? It, I'm not, I said before I'm not a designer. Um, I offered to get them a designer for the site, but they liked this. You know, they're academics, so you know, looking funky was not high on their list. Um, so they've got two products. Currently, they have one called the English Vocabulary Profile. That gives you a database access into the full vocabulary. Um, that's what I'm going to come back to later. But they also wanted to do the grammar. And that's the project that I worked on first. And they gave me a 20-page document full of things like this. These are the rules that someone has to be able to search the database by. Um, the most important thing was this A2B1. This is an international standard to, to rate how complicated a word is. So, for example, the word demonstration could mean I am giving you a demonstration of this, or it could mean I'm going on a demonstration against the government. And that might have different levels of English. So you needed to be able to see that as well as the meaning. <coughs> so the first thing we looked at was a product called NAC. And fundamentally, it's an online service that you can build a database entry to. Uh, the problem was for the grammar profile, we were just under the 20,000 records, but it's $39 a month for it. They're academics, they really don't have big budgets. And it definitely wasn't going to work for the vocabulary project that we wanted to do possibly sometime in the future, where it was 60 million records. Um, but I thought I'd take a look at NAC and see what it would do. Um, we can see here we've got the main category, the subcategory, the level, what they call the guide word, which is actually what the thing is you're looking for, and the usage example. And then there's an extra button called view, and that takes you into further details. So this is kind of what they wanted to do, but they wanted you to be able to search it. And the problem with NAC was if I did a search, for example, Brian, it's actually giving me all these hits, but the word doesn't appear anywhere on the screen because it's in the extra details, because every field is searchable even if it's not displayed. And then they went to these filters, um, so we can see make the sub adjectives the main thing, and that was cool, but when you did subcategories, it showed you every single subcategory not, that was not relational to the main category that they had. And it lets you add extra filters. Yeah, so we've got multiple levels and you can remove them. 
and you can do other stuff, but it just doesn't really do a fraction of what they needed it to do. Um, it also had some really weird things. The only way to remove everything to reset was to manually delete every single filter. Uh, so that wasn't going to work for what they wanted. Um, it was very expensive. It, it didn't have the ability to export the results. That was something they really wanted. They wanted a teacher to be able to come along and find out all the adjectives at level B3 and, and export all the results so they could prepare a lesson plan or write a book or something like that. So it didn't have any of that. In terms of updating it, um, it's a spread. Fundamentally, that system is you upload a spreadsheet and it converts it. And if you want to make any changes, you have to get to your master spreadsheet, delete the one online, and update the whole thing again. Uh, so that wasn't really very good. As we saw, it was a flat system, not relational. So sub main categories and subcategories, they're just a big long list. But the most important thing was in the filters, you could do an and filter. Is it in this and this? That was what they want. But what they wanted was to do, is it in this group or in this group? And it didn't allow that. So that's when they came to me and said, can Joomla do this? We have a basic Joomla website. Can you add it? So the first thing I did was I went to the extension directory. And I searched, and apart from the fact that the only things that sounded like they might do something were really expensive, they didn't do it anyway. And I thought about writing something myself, but I'm not a developer, so that was out the window. And then I came across this. Has anyone heard of this before? Yeah. Okay. Then when you, it's called Component Creator. It allows you to build your own components. Fairly basic ones, um, but the, the good things that it let me do, it let me do filters, like you have in the back end of Joomla, you know, you're filtering for your articles, but you could do that in the front end as well. You could have multiple filters. You still couldn't do the or, you could only do and, and you still couldn't export the results. So I was close, but not close enough to satisfy their needs. So I went back to the extension directory, and I searched again. And this time I came across some, this extension called Alter Reports. Yeah, now, I'm not even going to ask if you've heard of it, because almost nobody has. Um, it was a commercial extension. It's 59 or at the time of the screenshot, it was $59. Um, might have gone up a little bit. And this is a tool for generating SQL reports, exports. And it saw it had a button in the demo that you could export to Excel and CSV. So I started thinking, can I combine Component Creator to create the data and this to generate the reports that the users want? And as I say, Alt Reports did filters. It did multiple filters. It did do the and and the or. Yes, yeah, so that was a tick. I could export the results. And it did something called conditional SQL. Doesn't it meant I could do complicated stuff. Yeah, that's, that's good enough. Because I said there was 20 pages of examples that they wanted me to do. And some of those were really complex. Um, and it could do those. So, how did you do it? Well, it started off, I got a spreadsheet from them that looked like this. Um, it's flat, I got to convert it into a SQL, I got to import it. It had a couple of strange things that made the import hard. Um, you can see, I don't know if you can see, but this one here has got a red triangle. I did not import at all when I imported it into SQL. So the only way to solve that was wherever it said red triangle in the spreadsheet, it was changed to Brian. And then it would import, and then when I got it in the database, everywhere it said Brian, it was changed to the character for the triangle. That's the only way I could find to do that. But I've got this spreadsheet. Now this spreadsheet has got 20,000 rows. That's quite a big spreadsheet. And you can't easily import that into a database. 
Yeah, it just doesn't like it, it falls over. And then I found this website called Sequelizer. And I'll leave it on mine to Peter can take his photo. Um, it's really nice, as it says, you can uh, select which file type, is it Excel, is it CSV, and some other formats, you add the file. It, um, you just, is the first row a list of the column names? Yeah, if it is, it makes the field. You upload the thing, and it spits out a SQL import that you can then really simply import into your database. Um, it took for the 20,000 records, it took it about 10 minutes before it came back with the results, but that was 10 minutes, whereas my attempts at doing it before I found this, I'd spent eight hours and got 100 records done. So uh, it definitely was worth it. And, well, it was worth it, it was free, so it was really worth it. So a lot of people think that when you've got a problem, we can just edit the files. Uh, we can customize it and we can edit the files. Uh, the trouble is when you do that, you've now got two problems. Uh, you've edited the files and you can't update them. And you've also got a dead cat. Um, so what I want to do, assuming the Wi-Fi is OK, is, sorry, I've had this photo saved for years, looking for opportunities to use it, um, is I'm going to give you a bit of a demo of what it is that we've actually done and show you how it's been achieved. So, so this is Component Creator, and you can see I've created quite a lot of components, but the one that we're doing is Grammar and it contains four tables. Uh, the main content, and then the level, the category, and then there was a special uh, icon as well. And in, inside content, I've got 17 fields. Um, and as you can see, the, the, the main word, the supercategory, the subcategory, and the level. Really simple. Um, to add a new field, you just go add field. Give it a name, what type of field it is, and then you've got all the Joomla field types in there, plus uh, relational fields to other tables, SQL fields, some other SQL default fields, and some really special ones. But I could type in radio, um, it gives me some advice, I can give some default values, and I can just keep adding the values and build my component that way. So I use this, compo this component created to build the basic components. That's what I entered all my data. So the data that I imported all came into this component, grammar. And if I go to contents, okay. ah. So we can see all the records here. Um, I'm only displaying some of the fields. Uh, we've got the full uh, filtering that I would expect. And if a field, if a record has changed, they can just go in and change it. And they can just change one record. Remember on the other system, they'd have to change the spreadsheet and then upload the entire thing. So they can just do it record by record. So that's given me the component, which will let me view individual records but then I need to use the alter reports component to do all my searching. And alter reports looks like this, well, now that I've done it. Um, we have uh, at the top a basic search field and the ability to set which level you want to do, and that's a radio, so you can select a checkbox rather, so you can select multiple levels at once. Um, and you can just do a search from there. So if I was to search for contribute, oh, no, no results. Okay. Um, all right. I should have checked that bit beforehand. This page is the demo. Okay, 
So here we've got 10 entries yeah, um, for the word comma. It's only searching in some of the fields, because I've told all reports only to look in some fields. And I'm only searching in the fields that are visible on the screen. Um, so here we've got, uh, you can use a comma before the noun, etc. It's level B1. And if I hover over the example, I can see the example. And if I click on details, I get the full record. So that full record is coming from the components I created with Component Creator. But the previous part is just the view coming from Alter Reports. Yes, uh, Peter. How did you uh, add the colors in this? OK. Just, uh, in this bit or in the? the uh, it's CSS. <laughs> really, it's really, basically, I was able to give a class okay. to it. Um, in fact, there's, a, there's a, a more complex example here, I think. Uh, actually, these were CSS, basically. Uh, so the va it was um, class equals value, output value. So I've got A2 as a class. Yeah? Uh, this one was a little bit harder because form and form use, it was picking up the wrong ones. There's a bit of jQuery in there. Uh, but it should have been the same way. Okay, um, one, of the, one of the concepts was their original design had lots more of the fields visible on the screen. But the problem is it was too much. You couldn't actually see you know, what you wanted to see. So that's why the example one is just a hover over and details is a full detail. Um, and of course, once you've got your search on the screen, you can now just keep filtering it down to just include the B1s. Yeah, so there you've got all the ones that just have B1. And over here on the right, you've got a nice big download spreadsheet button. Um, there's, which produces a really nicely formatted spreadsheet. Um, with colours and all sorts of other wonderful stuff. Um, only problem with it is it uses a huge amount of memory to generate. Um, and I think if you've got about 2,000 records in your report, as a maximum, it will work. After that, it depends if anybody else is even remotely looking at the website at that time. Um, it may not. Uh, so that's a slight bug that we've not resolved. Um, but we also have additional filters. So the main category and the subcategory, and you can see that when I hit a main category, it refreshes so that my subcategory is only the relevant one for the main category. And you can go even further and add more filters. And this time you can do that wonderful thing that they wanted, the and and the or. So it, does it, is it in this set or is it in this other results. And everything that you've seen is part of the default of Alter Reports, the default functionality. The layout I've customized. Because yeah, by default it would show all of this on the screen at once. And it was just a bit too complicated. So we hid it, we hid it behind just jQuery toggle uh, just to make it really simple um, and keep it nice and easy. Um, to give you an idea of the usage of this, there's about a thousand reports generated, so downloaded every day. Um, which is, obviously there could be lots of different people doing things. Not everybody bothers to download, they find their answer anyway, but it's getting a lot of use. Um, and the reporting side looks like this at the back end. That. Right. And I should say you could use this, this component could be used just as a back end functionality to generate reports of the admin. Uh, you don't have to do it at the front end. Um, so you put some basic details in, the usual publishing details. Then you've got the data. 
and you can see I've got this really complicated SQL query here. Um, actually, if I just got to here, it's a really standard SQL query. Just saying which, what's the basic data set to collect. Um, and uh, under, somewhere down the bottom, there's actually a button that says show all. And it will show all the fields that you've connected to so that you can just click to select them. And it's really easy. But the clever bit is here. And there's a comment there that says if supercat2. So supercat2 is one of my fields at the front end that they could, one of those filter fields. So if there's something in there, it does that extra bit of query. And if there's something in that one, it does this extra bit. So it's conditional queries. So it's actually not filtering the results. It's doing a brand new query each time. But it makes it much faster and much easier to do. And that's really simple. And you've got this nice check errors button and all the rest of it. So even my SQL skills, uh, they're not great. But I'm using the check errors. I was able to really quickly uh, get that sorted. Um, then you have this nice bit. Uh, it shows these are all the columns that are in my database. It's imported this in. I haven't had to type it in. And you can see some of them are different colours here. Uh, green means it's on the front. It's being displayed at the front end and the up and the back end. Uh, blue just means it's at the front end only, and red means it's not being displayed at all. And this is one of those components that has a lot of options. And when I say a lot, I mean a lot. Because um, if I look at uh, field level, you can see, some, is it enabled? Can you download it, etc. Is it ordered? Is it searchable? Um, do you want to do some PHP processing on it or add some HTML template to it? But then you can say, I want to do some formatting as well for the front end, different to the back end, or different to the CSV download, or different to the Excel. And it goes on, and you can really start to customize everything. And um, let's just say, don't touch it. <laughs> yeah, 99% of the time, you don't need it. Um, but Peter asked about the CSS styling on something. Um, is it this one? Level. It was level, wasn't it? Print in view, edit format settings. There, Peter. HTML template, span class equals, label dash value. Yeah? And you can also combine fields as well in the display. So that's what I was doing. Um, oops. Clear results. So this block here is actually three separate fields. Yeah. What type it is, what the can do statement, and what the description of it is. But I was using by using the alter reports formatting engine, it would format it all in a nice, easy way to make things easier. So by not manipulating my data, I'm not having to change the data sets to represent the content. And that was really turned out to be more important than I thought, because although I use component creators to give them this nice way to edit individual records, in two years, they've never edited an individual record. What they have done, though, is said, Here's an extra thousand records we want you to import. Yeah? So all I have to do then is go back to the SQLizer site, produce my SQL import and import it, and it's done all the all this manipulation is not in the data. I'm not changing the data. So it made it really simple. And um, so that's pretty much where we're at right now. Um, as I say, it's online. There's about a thousand reports generated, print, downloaded a day. Um, I suspect it's more like three thousand generated because uh, they don't download anything. But they now want me to start working on a new one. And this is what they 
the new one is for the English vocabulary. So this is for the 60 million records. Um, currently, they have a version of the site uh, doing that. It's not Joomla. Um, actually, they don't know what it is. It was built about six years ago. Um, they don't remember who built it. Um, they don't actually know where it's physically hosted. Um, so if somebody has a password for it, they don't know where to go to do that. They don't know who to... They think they might be paying somebody for something, but they're not incredibly certain. Um, so can I just start again? Um, which is what I do. But you'll see on this version, um, it's slightly different. So this was the system they had before. You can see if you want A1 to A2, you've got an option. Then you've got A2 only. You've got, you've, it's all predefined. Yeah, all the options that you've got. Um, you have this advanced search button, which is kind of like the filters that I had. Um, the only problem with the advanced search button is that if I have AdWords, um, you'll see up here, green thumb. Yeah, that's uh, my ad blocker, which has been disabled for this site. Because with ad blocker enabled, that whole box disappears. Completely, you don't even know it's there, so there is no advanced search functionality for most people. And it's slightly different because um, there is no structure to this database at all. The structure is an XML file, so the structure is that there are tags around words, and that this is a uh, a definition, that's a level, this is a description, that's an example, that's okay. But then you start getting more complicated. This is an, another example and another description of the same word or at different levels. It's all together as one. So we're currently trying to work out how to get through 60 million records and convert them into something that I can use. Um, it also has um, a sound file that you can click on. Somebody has actually They've paid somebody to sit in a recording studio and record all the words. Um, they're all nicely compressed small files on this website, the one that they don't know where it is. But they do have the original recordings. So they're going to ship me a hard drive of all the original recordings so that I can compress them all. Um, and do it, but it's got, it hopefully will work. At the moment, it's completely useless. Yeah? Um, as I say, they don't know where it is, so they can't update it, but it, it doesn't do what people want to do. Um, but that's, I'm just waiting for them to work out how to do the data, to get me the data. Um, but I've written the new version of the website to cope with this already. It's got, much, it's got a lot more filters and a lot more levels because you have. How will you get the data? XL, uh, XLS? Like, XL is not working for 6 million records. Uh, <laughs> yeah, don't really know right now. Um, it looks like I'll get two sets of data. Set one is just um, the columns that you would see on the first page, and the detailed view will be a separate data set. That one might just be a huge dump and I'll just do some search and replace for type formatting. Um, and the other one is the one that I'm actually searching on. Uh, so that's, we think, how it's going to be done. We don't really know until they actually sit down and produce the data. Um, they've paid me for all of the work. They just haven't given me anything to work with yet, uh, which is kind of nice. Um, it also um, has some interesting options. Uh, hide culturally sensitive words. Just, you know, from the search. And that's kind of cool. It's going to be like Google Safe Search. Yeah, so I tried a few things and it didn't seem to do anything. So we went to the master data record because we can't look at the database for this because nobody knows where it is. But we went to the main database record and realized that there is a field, culturally sensitive words. And on the 60 million records, there's 27. <laughs> that have been flagged. So that won't be appearing um, on the website. And the other thing that it has, you can't see it too easily, this is British English, 
it has an American English version as well. There is hardly any difference between the two sets. Maybe only the offensive words, AF100 or something? No, <laughs> didn't check that, I should check that. Um, the main difference is, obviously there's some spelling changes. The main difference is these two. So this is the International Phonetic Alphabet, which teaches them how to pronounce the word and the audio file. So they've got an American audio recording as well as a British audio recording. So I did suggest that we don't have two complete versions of the website, two matching data sets. We just have those fields duplicated. No. Can't do that. There might be one word that's very different, and it's very important to them. Um, so it's a huge, huge, huge project this one, for them, you know, it's really important to them, it's so important they spend six months sitting, not doing anything with the request for the data, um, but they're telling me it's really, really important and it's a crucial part of Cambridge University's thing. So, a couple of things to take out of this. One, there are solutions existing for what, any problem you might have you just sometimes need to be a bit creative to find those solutions. Since I found that Alta Reports extension, I've been using it on about three or four other projects. Um, some are really simple. Uh, some are just where I had a large amount of data and I wanted a way of easily filtering it. And it was really simple to do. Uh, Component Creator, I've actually used now quite a lot as well. Just giving a way of editing and structuring forms. Uh, within my components. Um, only system components, I've not gone any further than, than that. Um, and the other one, uh, which is more of a business lesson, is no matter how important and urgent the client says it is, their definition of important and urgent might not match yours. So when they told me this was, you know, a crucial project, this is one of the main things they want to achieve this year. They were a bit loose on the definition of what is this year. Um, of course, they were also talking a school year and not a calendar year, which extended it a bit more. But it also meant that when I quoted them a price and said it's going to take me three weeks to do the work, I blocked out three weeks of time to do the work. They, so I'm not taking any other work for those three weeks. They provide me with I can't do that work, but I also told other clients I'm busy those three weeks, so we can't do it. So it's okay, they've paid me for that time, but when they do come back and want the work done, they're actually going to have to pay again. Because they, they had my time, they just didn't use it. That's not my fault. Yeah, and it's something, it's, if you're working with clients, it's a concept that might seem a bit strange. Um, it might be sometimes quite hard to convince a client that they need to pay you again. Because they think they've paid you before. The trouble is they did pay you before and you sat there doing nothing whilst you waited for them to deliver the stuff that they pr promised to deliver. Um, so think about that. Uh, when you're working with some bigger client. The bigger the client, the more important it is to do that. Um, and there's nothing like telling them they've got to pay again if they don't deliver it to you by a certain date to actually force them to do it. Um, the only other client I've done it with, um, they've never been late delivering content ever again, uh, which is quite nice. Um, and that's pretty much it. Um, Happy to answer any questions or ideas or how did I do that or did I think of that or anything else. Um, thank you. Yes, Peter. Um, 60 million records. Yeah. Uh, MySQL. Yeah. Uh, OSQL. Um, anything is possible. Yeah. I don't even know if it really is 60 million records. I'm not sure how they are counting a record. 
Uh, it could be field. It could be that this word demonstration and the four records, the, the four blocks inside that are all different records. And yeah. I don't know until they give me the data. Yeah, I've kind of lo I've looked. They've given me some XML examples, but you can't tell from that what they mean when they say 60 million records. I suspect. It is the, the record one, record two, record three, record four. So they're not really records. Uh, that's what I suspect. Um, so don't know is the answer to that. Um, the one thing I can tell you is the, it's a dedicated server that it's running off, running PHP 5.3. Um, no idea where in the world it is, but it's very, very slow. Um, there's a bug on the server that Akiva Backup won't run on it at all. Um, Nicholas can't work out either why. It's not an Akiva Backup issue, it's a server issue. And they don't really know what they're doing about that, but that's something I'll, I'll have to address when we come to it. It's most likely will be a case of I'll do a working version on my server, um, and then it won't work on theirs, and then they'll work out why. That's what happened with the previous version. You need a password, Peter, but I can give it. But I can give it. I can. But I can. You saw his face. Yes, but Peter, there's only one password. Uh, no, for the world, so I can give you the password. I just don't remember it off the top of my head. Um, anything else? Brian, yes. your search for a report extension. Yes. Uh, have you only seen all the reports of have you seen yeah. the J, uh, JD, uh, JD, uh, JDB export? That was the first one that I looked at. Yeah. That will do, uh, first of all, that will do the exporting. It yeah. doesn't do the visual front end. Oh, anyway, right. it, it's an export report. But because I use it for the front end yeah. as well. It, when it didn't do the, that might, I might be confusing it with another one. There was nothing that did the and and the or. Okay. Yeah, uh, that was. Yeah, the crucial thing. I um, need to do it in, in, do it in the SQL code yeah. myself, yeah. Yeah, uh, there was another one that I looked at that did do the, that let, lets me write queries and save those queries as reports, and the user could have a list of predefined reports to do, um, and it would do everything, but it, obviously that's no good because it wouldn't yeah. let me search for the word or you know, stuff like that. So there was nothing else that came close. Um, I have to say that um, the component is well documented, it has quite a big thick manual that you can download to print out. And the guy was super helpful at, um, you know, how do you do this, and I'm struggling with this, and what's this field for, and you know, me telling him, you really shouldn't have all these fields for everything. You know, um, I think I customised that. Yeah, put, I used about 12 out of the 3,500 on that form. Um, so, because you have to increase the default PHP levels to even make it work. Um, so, it's a bit slow in the admin uh, to work with, but on the front end, it's mm -hmm. super fast and super easy. Cool. Okay? Is it coffee time now? Yes. yes. Perfect. Thank you very much.